It's hard to resist answering your phone, especially if your business depends on it. And while an unwanted call is often just a sales pitch, it can also be a setup to an expensive and frightening con. Hello, this is Kimberly. Kim Hickman's a real estate agent. Sure, when would you like to see it? Whose business depends on answering her phone, but she wasn't prepared for this call. Hey, my name is Sergeant Matthew King. I am with the Warrants and Citations Division. Um, it looks like our records are here at the Sheriff's Office says states you uh, missed a court appearance this past Monday at 9 a.m. It's something that could happen to anyone. He just went on to tell me that I missed jury duty and that to avoid being arrested, I would have to pay a fine. How believable was this? It was very believable. The fear of being arrested, going to jail, and losing her real estate license made Kimberly cooperate. Listen as he tricks her into revealing her address. Okay, so what's your state? You never received the actual court summons, is that correct? Right. Okay, let me go ahead and get you to verify your address real quick. Let's make sure the jury committee had the correct one on file. As long as you're willing to work with me to get this matter rectified civilly, I'll be more than happy to work with you. Uh, you know, rather than coming down and apprehending you. Kim was instructed to drive to the grocery store and purchase five gift cards worth $500 each, the price it would take to post bond, because Kim was now under arrest. You're under an apprehension. You've basically been taken into custody mobily at this point in time, okay? You heard that right. Remote mobile apprehension because of COVID-19. But Kim could avoid going to jail if she read him the card codes over the phone. I need to get $2,500 by Tuesday morning. Well, no, they were going to do that today. Believe it or not, I got one of these calls years ago when the scam was young. To increase believability, the con artist told me to bring my scratched off gift card here to the local sheriff's department, where they would issue me a receipt that I could then take to the clerk's office for a full refund. They are so embarrassed and feel so humiliated that they fell for it. Deputy Shannon Volkadov has personally told dozens of victims there is no refund because there never was a warrant, and those gift card codes had been given to crooks. What's it like meeting a victim face to face at the sheriff's office and telling them they've been taken? All I could do was comfort them the best I could and tell them the same thing I told you, is that good people assume goodness in others, and they are more likely to fall victim to phone scammers for that reason.